In this section, we're going to cover the use of the Big Memory package. This is a package I wrote to store, manipulate, and process dense matrices, called big matrices, that may be larger than a computer's RAM. We're going to cover how to create, retrieve, subset, and summarize big matrices. As mentioned before, our objects are kept in RAM. This is much faster than using the disk, but there is less RAM than disk. When you run out of RAM, your machine may start moving things to disk to make space. Your programs may keep running, but they will become slow. In most cases, you are better off moving data to RAM only when it is necessary for processing. This is sometimes called out-of-core computing, and it's the strategy we're going to use to process data. For data sets that are at least 20% of the size of RAM, and are also represented as dense matrices, matrices where most of the values are not zero, you should consider using a big matrix, which is implemented in the big memory package. By default, a big matrix keeps data on the disk and only moves it to RAM when it is needed. As a result, it won't bog down your machine when you run out of RAM. The movement of data from the disk to RAM is implicit, meaning that users don't have to make function calls to move the data. The package detects when needed data resides on disk and moves it for them. Another advantage of using a big matrix object is that, since it is stored on disk, it only needs to be imported once. You read in a big matrix object, similar to reading a data frame. However, doing this creates a backing file that holds the data in binary format, along with a descriptor file that tells R how to load it. In a subsequent session, you simply point R at these two files, and they are instantly available, without having to go through the import process again. Here's a first example of creating a big matrix object. First, we load the big memory package using the library function. Then we create a big matrix object. The six parameters specify the number of rows, number of columns, the type of elements the big matrix will hold, the initial value for all elements of the matrix, the name of the backing file, and the name of the descriptor file. The backing file holds the binary representation of the matrix on the disk. The descriptor file holds other information about the big matrix, like the number of rows, number of columns, type, and column and row names, if there are any. To print the elements of the big matrix object, you need to explicitly state that you want to see the elements. If you simply type X, then you'll see other information, including its type and the handle it holds to its underlying C++ data structure. Big matrix behaves like a regular R matrix. To change the value in the first row and the first column to three, assign three to X11. We can verify that this change has taken place by once again looking at all of its elements. Time to put this into practice. 